Donald is both taller than me and has the most splendid voice. Donald, I hope you are going to come to the bar as soon as you finish that JD. Uh, uh, um, Professor, uh, sorry, um, um, pro uh, Professor de Kretzer and Mrs. de Kretzer, uh, President Maxwell, uh, Your Honours, uh, Jennifer Petruni, President of the Australian Bar Association, uh, Imam Mohammed, uh, colleagues, honoured guests and friends, uh, good evening and welcome to the Victorian Bar. Uh, could I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the peoples of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, thank, thank you um, to the Australian Intercultural Society for joining with us for this very important event, uh, the first ever IFTAR hosted at the Victorian Bar. Uh, the first barrister was admitted to practice in what is now the state of Victoria on the 12th of April 1841, more than 178 years ago. The Victorian Bar itself was established nearly 135 years ago on the 10th of July 1884. As you entered Owen Dixon Chambers to find your way up here tonight, you will have seen some of the portraits in our Peter O'Callaghan QC gallery downstairs. They ce that celebrates many of our most revered members. And you'll have seen the wall of black and white portraits as you entered of the past chairs and presidents of the Victorian Bar. They're a, an impressive, slightly intimidating lot. They include Owen Dixon himself, uh, later the Chief Justice of the High Court, uh, Robert Menzies, Australia's longest serving Prime Minister, uh, and Sue Crennan, our first woman chair, who went on to become a member of the High Court. As is obvious, I think when you look around the whole of the Victorian Bar from the Portrait Gallery onwards, we have a proud history, uh, but it's not an unblemished history. Uh, it's impossible not to uh, notice when you walk through our Portrait Gallery uh, just how male dominated and how white uh, this institution has historically been. Uh, in 1969, which is 50 years ago, there had been only eight women who had signed the Victorian bar roll, and only one woman had made silk, Joan Rosanov QC. Our first Indigenous barrister, uh, Professor Mick Dodson, signed the bar roll in 1981. That's only about 38 years ago. Um, data is a bit hard to come by, but we do know that we had only a handful of barristers from Asian backgrounds sign the bar roll at the turn of the century. Not 1900, the year 2000. I'd like to be able to tell you about the history of Muslims at the Victorian Bar, but our records, shamefully, don't enable me to do so. Historically, we have not collected data uh, about the faith groups who are represented at our bar. I can say, though, that our progress in relation to diversity in recent times has been remarkable and is worth celebrating. We know that today 15% of our members were born overseas. 37% of our members had at least one parent born overseas. 9% of our members speak a language other than English at home. And 1.2% of our members are of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander heritage, uh, higher than the corresponding percentage of the Victorian population. Uh, we have a growing number of Muslim barristers in active practice, all of them making a difference in the lives of their clients every single day. Uh, and it's great to have the first uh, judicial officer in the state from a Muslim background here with us tonight, Magistrate Urfa Massoud. Um, as uh, President of the Bar, I have a simple approach towards questions of diversity and inclusion. The Victorian Bar must reflect the community it exists to serve, and until it does so, we have more work to do. Now, unless barristers can come here and be briefed on merit, whatever their background, their beliefs, their race, their gender, their sexuality or their disabilities, then the full array of extraordinary talent is not being respected or fulfilling its potential. Um, most of us as lawyers, I, I, I profoundly believe, are inspired to enter the law by a desire to help people, to make the community a better place. That is particularly true for people from diverse backgrounds who are likely to have experienced or witnessed injustice and discrimination. Uh, combating injustice and discrimination is hard work, but it's also incredibly rewarding. Some rare people in our community have the chance to change the world. 
Uh, as barristers, we have that very precious privilege. Uh, by giving advice and appearing on our clients' behalves, we get to change their lives for the better. And in so doing, we contribute not only to the administration of justice, we also strengthen Victoria and Australia as places where disputes are resolved by reference to the rule of law, by impartial and incorruptible judges, assisted by fearless, independent and outstanding advocates. How lucky are we? Many communities who have faced historical disadvantage have trodden the long path towards equality in the law, and we can learn from them. Women, barristers from Asian and other backgrounds, members of the LGBTI community, and so on. Um, the fight for equality is not yet won, but very significant strides have been made, and there is genuine momentum. I would like to see those strides shared by a greater number of barristers from Muslim backgrounds, so many of whom I know from my own experience around this place, to be intelligent, talented, diligent and motivated. And it's really for all those reasons that I am just so thrilled to see so many people here tonight. You are all very welcome here in our home and I hope that tonight is the first of many iftars hosted here at the Victorian Bar.